Hey Russ here, abstract reasoning questions can drive police applicants absolutely bonkers when it comes to entrance exams or entrance assessments. But in this video I'm going to share some simple tips with you and one really important principle that if you use when you're doing abstract reasoning questions, I think you'll find getting through them are a hell of a lot easier. So let's get started. Have a go at this practice question first. Pause the video if you need to. And when you've done that, we'll go through the question together. We'll pull it apart. I'll show you these little tips and techniques and this important strategy or principle that I want you to get your head around. Okay, let's pull this question apart now and see if we can figure out how to answer these types of questions a little more quickly and a little more confidently. Now, of course, black and white is less easy to work with than if the individual components in the boxes were colored. So if I change them to colored now, you can see quite clearly we've got a yellow arrow or an orange arrow, a pink spot and these little blue droplets. So what you need to do is focus on just one of those elements and follow it through to completion from left through to right and see if you can identify what's happening. So let's start with the orange arrow. We can see that it's pointing up, now it's pointing to the right, and now it's pointing down, now it's pointing to the left and really it's just simply rotating and the rotation is in a clockwise direction. So if you identified that pattern or sequence, you'd have a pretty good chance of realizing what the next box is likely to display as far as the arrow is concerned. Let's do the same with the pink spots now. So here in the bottom left hand corner, there's a pink spot that seems to be growing in size as it goes from left to right. So again, if you were to have a guess at what might appear in the next box, if you were to continue the sequence, you'd be looking for something that's increasing in size compared to the previous box. The other one was the little blue droplets. So as we go from left to right again, just looking at this now, the position is moving. However, the number of blue uh, droplets is actually increasing. So in this case, it might be that the position is not very relevant. They could be scattered all over the place but we've got in the first box, one droplet, then two, then three, then four. So following on from that pattern or sequence, you could expect five droplets to appear in the last box. So the item, the shape, the image, whatever it is, in this case, a blue droplet, is simply increasing in number. So what we've done is to take the three individual shapes or items that we see in the full picture of the box, but we've separated them now. And that's one of the most important things I think you could start with is to separate individual items and follow them through um, from start to finish. Now, of course, it doesn't lay itself out like that. They're merged together to form one individual shape. But what's really important, this principle is very, very important. This is not a flat image where they're all on the same level or the same layer. If we go back to the previous item, we had those individual layers, but we then overlaid them on top of each other. Okay, so that's really important to keep in mind and you'll see at the end why that's so important. All right, so we need to figure out which one's gonna go in the end box now, keeping in mind all of those uh, individual things that are happening with each of those different individual shapes. So here's our question that we started with. Of course, we had it in black and white. Now that we've got it in color, it's a little bit easier to deal with. Now we need to identify what is it that is likely to tick all three boxes to give me the answer to go into the final box there. So we should agree that we're looking for something from the A, B, C, D or E options that has an arrow that's pointing straight back to the top because we know that it's completed its rotation and it's likely to be pointing back to the top of the square. Now the next one was the blue, or sorry, the pink dot. We're looking for a pink dot that has increased in size but has increased in size proportionately. So box number four at the top there, we want the next one to be a size that has incrementally increased. Okay, not something that might be massive, but just something that's incrementally increased when compared to the increase that's happened so far in the sequence. All right, now in terms of the blue droplets, we're looking for five individual blue dots or uh, droplets we know because it's increased in numbers from one to two to three to four, so we would expect the last one to be five. Now again, very important to keep in mind when we're selecting from A, B, C, D, or E, that we're taking into account the layers. 
okay, one over the top of the other. Now, if you're taking into account all of these things, we should end up with C as the correct answer for this question. So if you haven't ended up with C, a couple of things that may have gone wrong. If we look over here at A, if you picked A, there's a couple of reasons why it's not A. The first is that pink circle is very, very big. In fact, it's bigger than the pink circle in C. Now, if you looked at number four in the top row, the fourth box along, C has a better comparison um, in terms of the incremental increase, whereas A is a very big jump in the incremental increase of the size of the pink dot. So for that reason, the, the, the big circle or the big pink dot in A is too big and it doesn't really fit. Now, the other very important thing about A refers to this, this principle of layers. Now, if you have a look over here at box number four from left to right, have a look at where the arrow is. It's sitting on a layer that's below, or you might think of it as in front, or maybe behind, depending on your perspective, but it's hidden underneath the pink dot. Whereas if we look back at option A, it's the opposite way around. The arrow is actually sitting on top of the pink dot, not hiding underneath it. So A is not the correct answer for those couple of reasons. If we look at C in relation to the arrow, you can see that it's hiding or underneath the pink dot in the same way that number four at the top there uh, is hiding underneath that pink dot. I right, say so there's a lot, lot there to think about, but when you break it down into those individual layers and follow one layer through, follow one layer through, or one object through from start to finish, you'll then have the checklist of things that you're looking for from A, B, C, D, and E, all of which must tick that, those boxes in order to be the correct answer. Right, much easier when it's in color, and I wanted to demonstrate it like that for you to help you, help you uh, realize that they're separate layers. When we go back to one that's not colored, that's a lot more difficult. So think of it as layers, identify individual shapes within the box, discard everything else and just focus on one of those objects, follow that object through, and what you need to be asking yourself as you're following that object through to completion is, what pattern am I picking up? Is it increasing, is it reducing, is it growing in size, is it moving from left to right, is it rotating, is it triggering something else to happen or triggering something else not to happen? There's a lot of other variables that we need to consider when we're, when we're watching that pattern through from start to finish. But either way, there's a little tip to deal with these particular types of abstract reasoning questions. And this one, I guess a progression where you need to find what would be the next in sequence from the options A, B, C, D, or E that are presented below. As always, guys, I hope you found that helpful and I look forward to chatting to you again soon. Cheers.